Suspension geometry. It's not just for keeping your pants up. So uh, admittedly, I'm not an expert on the suspension geometry. Maybe you know more about me and you can take me to task in the comments. But today we're gonna talk about suspension geometry, the things that you, you really don't have to think about, but some people do think about and what we would do to change our suspension geometry. So I will say modern rigs these days, they have really good suspension geometry right out of the box. Uh, let's see, do I have any older examples? Uh, I mean, there, there's obvious ones like the, the this thing. <laughs> it doesn't really have suspension though, so it, it doesn't count. Uh, you know, the suspension geometry on some scale rig like this isn't gonna be great, but it's not meant for extreme routes uh you know i i don't have like an original ax10 but the ax10 would be like the pinnacle of bad suspension geometry really high roll center anti-squat was just way too much and we're going to talk about what that means today so what i have here 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 is a stock scx10 and there's really not much that you can do on the suspension geometry for stock scx10 our mounts on the skid plate for our lower links are not movable and our upper links are also pretty much fixed in one spot. Now there are a couple of holes that you can move them to but it really jacks up the suspension geometry to a degree to it just doesn't work good. So not really recommended. And we can look at what is called the roll center of the rig. You can press it back and forth. Does it just flop over super easy from a high push? And then if you rotate the chassis, how does it rotate? And something with too high of a roll center is really gonna have this big old body roll. It's not an issue in today's modern things. Actually, I see one right here that has a really high roll center compared to the center of gravity of the body. And so this actually will give you more torque twist and a lot more like it's gonna try to peel off the rocks when you have a really high roll center or a roll center that's too low compared to the center of gravity of your chassis. Um, so the roll center is one thing that it's that's really a black art that i haven't gotten into very much but i do know that we always want to make sure that our roll center is either pretty much in line as much as we can with the center gravity of our chassis or you want it to be higher so the chassis doesn't swing left and right you want your roll center to be up high so the chassis more swings like this or on an even keel that makes it more predictable and you don't have the cab leaning over and pulling and peeling your front axle or rear axle off the rocks so there's the first term roll center the other term is going to be the anti-squat or anti-dive characteristics of the rig and this is going to be determined by your upper and lower links and how they're separated and there is actually to do with your triangulation of the links we'll talk about the tri triangulation at the end but that really isn't suspension geometry as much as just making it work without sucking so if we were able to modify this rig the easiest way without replacing the chassis is going to be a link riser on the back this would allow you to raise up your rear link mounts on the axle and this would increase your anti-squat now you can increase it to a point to where it anti-squats and completely locks out your rear suspension when you're climbing up a hill you get no suspension action and it just kind of sits there and goes like, gah, 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 gah. so there is kind of a fine line on you want some anti-squat, but you don't want too much. If you don't have enough anti-squat or if it gets into dive, then when you load it up like this, your rear end is gonna, it's gonna dive down all the way. It can even uh, completely compress your suspension and you're losing traction. If you think you're trying to go through something, you, it can even be on a level ground and you're accelerating. If you're diving down, then you're not actually putting that weight into your traction. You're putting that weight into actuating your suspension instead. Now, on this rig, like I said, it's a stock SCX-10 II, I think, RTR. And the only thing that you could easily do without getting into a whole lot of mods in a different chassis is going to be that rear upper link mount. So that at least you could raise or lower and try to tune a little bit. Now, a lot of this does have to do with the center gravity of the rig. That's how anti-squat and the roll center is all calculated. So if you have a small battery up here, it's going to change your anti-dive or anti-squat characteristics as opposed to the opposite size of battery, big battery, small battery, whichever I said. 
so a, a large battery is going to have a different center of gravity and different needs for anti-squat. And then we can also get into our suspension rate, you know, how stiff are the springs. If you change the weight of your rig, then your spring rate will also change for all of this. And uh, like I said, I'm not an expert. It gets really complicated. And back in the early days, I was almost going to start making wheels and chassis like all the other guys were because, you know, get a router and start cutting out of carbon fiber or Delrin, stuff like that. And I quickly realized that maybe this isn't my forte. And I started going into motors instead, which worked out fairly well, I reckon. So yeah, here we go. Stock rig. You really can't do much except for that upper uh, rear link mount. You can't really do a front link mount because either you have a servo mounted on the axle and it gets in the way, or you have this servo on chassis and you, we really can't add anything up top or else it won't compress. It, it just, it, we're limited by the suspension geometry of the three link in this case. So it is what it is. You kind of have to deal with it. Fortunately, the front anti-squat is really not that big of a deal. However, you can change the roll center by changing your link separations at the chassis or at the axle. And that's one thing we'll talk about the triangulation a little bit later. So let's say you do need to change your anti-squat on a rig or your roll center, which the roll center is a lot more complicated. So let's just ignore that for now. This is a 2.2 MOA comp rig and this is the chassis that you know somebody cut in their basement pretty much out of acetyl plastic and as you can see on the sides there are a ton of link mount positions now you will note maybe that there's only one position here on the lower link but on the upper link you have all of these choices and this is pretty much what is going to be standard now if we look at the rear you can see there is a link riser link mount riser that is attached to this normally the links would be mounted much lower and this guy has this riser and it actually has a few positions that you could choose to put that in there so this is how you would tune your anti-squat this is a competition rig this is an moa so our front and our rear are actually independently controlled and the anti-squat characteristics really start to play a big role in this even if it's not a shafty even if it's just like this where they're decoupled from each other but as you load up the front or the rear and and the way that this one is constructed it'll actually suck down you can see when i start to get some some bite on the front it will suck down the rear and that is because of the way that the anti-squat on this particular rig it has been calculated what you want on a comp rig is to stay low when you get under load you don't want it pushing this chassis so let's say we were naturally riding about right here when you get under load you don't want it doing like this because it's going to raise your roll center and it'll end up peeling you off the rocks so what people do is uh, they try to get the roll center as good as possible but then you really have to make sure that your anti-squat or anti-dive characteristics are proper and a lot of that is when you're up here you know, we're, we're pulling with the front, we're pushing with the rear. How is it going to react? And you can see that it's actually trying to lock out a little bit or even dive a little bit. Let's see the way that this one is set. And it's much easier to just, you know, go drive it and tune and drive and tune and drive and tune until you like how it handles. Because a lot of this is just being able to predict the rig. But you can get to a point to where when it's not tuned right, you, you can get your tires and you can get your... Uh, 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 foams and everything tuned really really well and it still won't hook on a particular item and so the last thing to do is to come in and start tweaking with these upper links sometimes even different link lengths is needed so that you can hit the right holes and have you know the right geometry on the back more so for a shafty rig but even on these moas the 2.2 moa class you know there there's tuning room and there's tuning on the front as well as the back on these uh, but these are pretty much the pinnacle of competition and these are the pinnacle of people tweaking with suspension geometry because when you get up to that high echelon everything has to be on point you have to be able to predict the rig and it also needs to be extremely capable in all scenarios and so the link suspension uh, the suspension tuning your link tuning you know, on the positions is of utmost criticalness so 2.2 moa now let's look at a modern scale comp rig i guess this would be like a c2 comp rig uh, a sorka style comp rig is going to be shaft driven as you can see we have you know our, our forward transmission we have a center right here and this one does have 33 percent dig built into the front of the back so it's going to naturally want to pull on there and the way that i have it set up 
there is a little bit of natural kind of setting of the suspension when it's loaded down. The rear is a little bit stiffer. I could use softer springs if I want, but when you get up into a situation like this, those softer springs are going to end up being really floppy and all over the place. These modern rigs, the roll center is absolutely fantastic. You know, if I have a body on top, and I go to push to the side, the rig really tries to move more to a side instead of the entire top of the body rolling. And a lot of that is because look how long these are, even compared to this comp rig here. You can see how far apart that the lowers mount on this chassis. And this isn't a bad chassis by any means, but this is a little bit more updated geometry. And you can see that these lower links are really far into this pocket. They're almost touching as compared. And that actually lets you tune your roll center a little bit better and gives you more tuning room as well for your anti-squat. Now, going back to what we were talking about on anti-squat, I don't have any link risers on this. It may be necessary, but uh, really I'm not a, a competitor when it boils down to it. I'm building this for fun. I'm not going out trying to win first place. I like to go to events and just hang out. But again, as you can see, we have these upper link mounts that we can change. You cannot change the lower link mounts on this. It is standard and there's really nowhere else where we can mount them on the axle. So you're, you, you kind of get what you get on that regard. But we have this option for the upper rear link mounts at the chassis and we can change those we have uh, one two three four five six seven different holes to choose from you can mount it up or down if you go down at the chassis it gives you more anti-squat if you go up at the chassis it gives you less and then opposite on this end if i did a link riser on there we mount it up more and it's going to give me more anti-squat it's going to be stiffer suspension under load and acceleration uh, and vice versa for reducing them back into stock now on this one, let's see, or maybe there's a different one. Yeah, we'll just look at this one. We can get into the triangulation as our last thing. Um, although first I will mention on the front of this chassis, there pretty much is no option for changing your link positions. Uh, it, the front anti-squat really isn't as imperative on these. If this was like a really high horsepower formula off-road or something like that, then it would actually be necessary. U4 racing, you really got to be able to tune your front because you're, you're going fast and that has a lot to do with how your suspension reacts under load. You don't really want it to, to dive too much or to raise up too much under there. So tuning the front is more imperative when you go fast, but on a crawler like this, really the front is what it is it's always going to be there it's always going to hook but you really need to have that rear predictable on there all right so back to what i was saying about link geometry and triangulation pretty much all modern rigs are going to be double triangulated or close to double triangulated and what that means is that you can see on our lowers they're mounted wide at the axle and then we go up to a narrow mount on the chassis and then opposite for our upper links they are relatively narrow at the axle and then wider at the chassis and if we can look through pretty much all modern rigs this is what they've gone to it gives us the roll center that we want but it also gives us a side to side stiffness so you can see both front and rear on this very close on our upper links at the axle and wide at the chassis and then reverse for the lower links, we have it wide at the, the axles and narrow at the chassis. And, and really, you know, again, I'm not an expert on this, but I know what it does and what we're trying to do. I'm just not the guy to try to figure it out for you, really. It's amazing that rigs come with the exceptional geometry that they do. So why do we need triangulation? This isn't really part of trying to tune things, but sometimes you might have a rig where you get a whole lot of side to side slop, especially a custom rig. Now the slop that you're seeing right here is just looseness in the actual ball ends themselves. I've worn it in enough. You know, there's not much in the front, but we also have a pan hard bar that's keeping us together. But on a regular four link, if we didn't have, let, let's say our upper links were just straight front to back, like some of the old classic rigs were, this would be far, far worse with the same amount of wear on our balls. <laughs> All right, keep a straight face. Keep, keep, keep a straight face. Can't do it. Can't do it. All right. Uh, so if we didn't have as much triangulation or if we didn't have double triangulation, this side to side movement would be far worse. Uh, so the double triangulation is not only for that stiffness, that side to side stiffness. As you can see, this one is real stiff. We have a lot of triangulation, both top and rear, top and bottom. 
but it also gets that roll center where we want. And the roll center tuning with the, the triangulation is, that's a black art for me. I never quite got into it. And so I rely on people that build chassis these days to do that for me. And they get you in the ballpark. And then from there, it's a little bit of tuning if you want to, but otherwise, if you got some locals to you, you can see what they're building. You can more or less copy their build and then use the same link geometry and it'll get you to a really good point, you know, and, and maybe over time you end up changing things. Maybe your motor is going to be lighter or heavier than theirs. And that does change things a little bit, but the point is still there. So there we go. That was a lot of rambling about link geometry, anti-squat, anti-dive, roll center, and then triangulation. That's really about all the things you would need to know. And honestly, you don't even need to know it, but if you do have questions, you can leave them down below. And if you have comments, if you have more insight or maybe a good calculator that people can actually visually see how it changes, leave that down below. We'll do our best to get to those comments. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day.